we've been taught to stick your hand out and put your hand and let the dog sniff your hand. No. First and foremost, I love this book. If you have kids and you have no dogs and you have kids and you have dogs, if you have dogs and you know people with kids, this book is really, really, really helpful. It's not necessarily a kid's book. I have promoted this book so many times. I have a link down below, but I love this book because it has beautiful, fun illustrations showing different dog behavior. First and foremost, understanding dog behavior or dog body language, starting to teach your kid what dogs are saying. And please, for the love of all, it is a myth, 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 myth. It is an absolute, total, complete lie, stupidity, nonsense, that when a dog is wagging its tail, that means it's happy or friendly. Nonsense. Dogs will be fighting to the death in a dog fighting ring while wagging their tail. <laughs> Do you hear me? When a dog is nervous or afraid, their tail might be wagging low. It's not the wagging, it's how they're wagging. A tail that is in an aggressive straight is tense and there's tension and they're their fur on their back will be sticking up and their ears will in their eyes. You gotta read the whole dog, not just the tail. So stop telling children that if a dog is wagging their tail, it's okay to pet them. Sometimes it is, it's not always. And you know what? Just because a dog is happy doesn't mean that they're safe to pet because they could be overexcited happy and they can knock a child over. Especially, I don't know, if they're the size of a Great Dane. Okay off my soapbox. Disclaimer, I am not a dog trainer. I am a mom of four children. I've had my own dog for about 20 years and I have worked with dogs that have high prey drive, resource guarding issues. I have worked with little dogs and I've worked with giant breeds and German shepherds and hound dogs. I do research. I love dogs. I watch podcasts from dog trainers. I will link some dog trainers down below. I've got you. But this is from the mom's perspective, okay? So back to the book. This book is a great, great resource for teaching you and your child really simply different dog body language what a head tilt is how dogs greet if a dog is alert it just it's all kinds of wonderful things like snarling mouth just because a dog is showing teeth doesn't mean that they're aggressive either so these are very very important things to know that's a little kid interacting with dogs so that's just cute so great resource this is another great resource one of the things that i learned from this book by uh pat miller she's a dog trainer you want to be wary of making eye contact with a dog and a lot of kids get in a lot of trouble with dogs because they look directly at the dog and may they make eye contact with the dog. In doggy world, in doggy language, that can be read as a threat. Dogs don't always make direct eye contact with each other. They have other ways of communicating. Yes, they do make eye contact with each other, but it's not the same way that people make eye contact with each other. So when we are making that strong, direct, frontal body language to a dog, that can be threatening. So a lot of times kids, well-meaning, sweet, innocent children, or not so well-meaning kids, will make more direct gestures and frontal movements to the dog, and that can cause conflict and make the dog feel afraid, tense, alert, or aggressive. And that is a dangerous dog, okay? Let me just put it to you this way, a dog, that is not in a relaxed, not happy, relaxed state of mind. Mildly excited is okay. Mildly happy, excited is okay. But anything above level three of excitement, so on a scale of one to 10, 10 being the most excited, anything more than that can be dangerous for a child to be interacting with a dog because the dog can play bite, play jump, knock them over with their tail, all those things. Mom, dad, parent to another parent. Look at me. You are your greatest advocate for your child. It's okay if you're walking with your child or you're out with your child and someone has a dog and the dog seems unruly. You, It is okay to cross the street and walk away or step aside or ask the person to control their dog politely 
If they ask if your child wants to pet the dog, if they're yelling, it's friendly. Let me, let me just tell you, most people when they yell, my dog's friendly, their dog's not friendly, okay? Usually they're trying to hide a little shame. Anyways, I digress. But you can say no. If, if your child, if you're over at someone's house and they have a dog and the dog is just too much for your child, I am never offended when my family asks me to put up my dog when uh, my nieces or nephews are over or anyone. If they don't like my dog being all up in their business, if my dog's not well behaved, if they're basically not in this category of behavior, I am always willing to put my dog up. Now, if my dogs are chilling like this and you don't want, another story. Anyways, you are allowed to say, please could you not let your dog interact with my child? It is better for you to hurt someone's feelings over this than for your child to end up in the hospital because they got bit in the face. Being real, even little dogs are dangerous, okay? And I say that as someone who loves dogs and I love interacting, but they're animals. They have the potential to bite. They have teeth. They have claws. They are wonderful creatures. They make our lives better. I love dogs. But hear me, they are still animals and they need to be respected as, as animals. And you know what? Showing them the respect that they deserve as animals is showing them love. Dog owners, you are allowed to say no to children petting your dog. If you are not comfortable with a person or a child interacting with your dog, you have the right to stand up for your dog and be the advocate for your dog. You are their parent too, okay? So same goes, all right? Let's 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 just be polite, be firm, but let's have safe interactions. If you're not comfortable with the situation or your dog is not comfortable with the situation, if the child's not comfortable with the situation, let's just move on. I feel like this is gonna be a long, long episode. Y'all get comfy, okay? We talked about advocating for a child. We've talked about advocating for your dog. We've talked about understanding dog body language. Here are steps that I do when I'm assessing if I want my kids to interrupt with a dog. If we're out at the store or if we're out for a walk and we see a dog, I look at how the dog is behaving. I also look at how the dog is being managed by the owner. Are they tugging on the leash? Are they zipping and sliding? Are they overly excited? Do they seem a little skittish? Whatever. If the dog is wearing a vest that says service dog, guide dog, therapy dog, working dog, if they're a police dog, those are working dogs. Now certain therapy dogs, they're supposed to be petable dogs. That is something that they're supposed to do but a service dog, emotional support dog, a dog that is wearing a service dog vest, whether that is a service to a person, a job such as a canine unit dog, bomb sniffing dog, what have you, a military dog, those dogs are working. And if they're wearing that vest, that means that they're on the job, okay? They are not to be petted. What I do is I point out the dog or my kids will point out the dog and I'll say, yes, that's a wonderful dog, but we're not gonna touch that dog. We're not even gonna ask the owner or the handler because that dog is working. It's clear that the dog is working. It's not fair to the handler to put the dog in that situation. It's not fair to the dog. I point out the vest and I'm like, look, that's a service dog. That dog is working. That dog has a job, wow. And we just kind of talk about what that dog might be doing, whether it's a guide dog, canine unit dog. It's a fun conversation to have, but we just go ahead and we have the rule that if a dog has the service dog vest on, they're a working dog and they're automatically off limits for touching. We just go ahead and establish that. Another thing that I pay attention to is how my child is feeling. And that's the most important thing. If your child is, especially a smaller child, if they're hiding behind your leg, if they've kind of got nervous body language, if they don't wanna to touch the dog, if they don't wanna pet the dog, don't make them. Keep your distance and calmly talk to your child through the situation. Talk about what kind of dog it is, if you know. Talk about what the dog is doing, how the dog is feeling. Oh, the dog's feeling scared too. You're feeling scared. Oh, look, you're both feeling scared. Oh, the dog's feeling happy. That's so exciting. Talk to, talk to your child and work out what's happening, but do it at a distance that's comfortable for your child. And if the dog and child never actually come nose to nose, that's cool. Sometimes 
good, low, safe interactions where the if the dogs are just chilling and the child is over there, that's great. Another thing I always do, my children have been taught, they ask. Always ask before you touch someone else's dog, whether we're going over to a friend's house, we're going over to Mama B's house, that's their grandmother. Um, she has lots of dogs and only one of them likes to be pet by kids and she's big and she spazzes and she gets happy and we have to be cautious because Arwen will do this little tornado zoomy mini like she, she does a zoomy but she spins and she tries to go low. She's a great Pyrenees so um, it's a it's a big problem. So yeah just just like a just like a tiny contained giant blizzard thing. Anyways, she can knock over a child and she'll step on your feet. So even though she's happy and she's very, other than that, she's super gentle with children. Another thing is um, don't, if your child is eating food or the dog is eating food, not a good time. Be sensible, okay? Teach your kid to leave dogs alone if they have food or if they're playing because a lot of times dogs don't know how to disengage from what they're doing to playing with the child, okay? Um, that's just how it is. Dogs can be taught, but you don't know if that's the case. So just err on the side of caution, okay? Yes, I know every dog is a good dog, but not every dog has been taught properly how to interact with humans in the human world, okay? Dog rules are different than human rules. We have to teach dogs and children how to interact with each other. And this is just precautions to take. Show your child how to pet a dog. Um, my dogs are laying down. Do not pet a dog on the head, on the top of the head. That is very threatening to dogs. That is not a natural thing for them. You notice they, when they play, they tend to nudge around the neck. So teach your kid to pet the under, under the chin. So teach the child to not pet like this, okay? This is not, doing like this can be threatening. Joy is okay with being pet like this. Many dogs are not. Hannah, it freaks out. Hannah's my dog right here. She gets freaked out by being pet like that. But you can teach to pet under the chin. This is a very, very good, um, you wanna be pet too? All right. She likes to be pet right here. But if you start petting her over, um, she lets me do it because I've been training her, so she's not a good example. But if someone else were to come and start trying to pet her on the top of her head right here, she would be very nervous, she would be back and white. But even then, she, if she wants to be pet, she wants to be pet under the chin. So this is a good place to teach, teach the kids to not poke the eyes, pull the ears, pull the tails. The obvious sensible child, you know that. But most people don't realize we've, we've been taught to stick your hand out and put your hand and let the dog sniff your hand. No. Don't do that. That makes a lot of dogs nervous and fearful. And guess what? A fearful dog is just as dangerous as an aggressive dog. I think I've said that before because they are just as likely to snap as an aggressive dog because they're afraid. They're going to defend themselves. Again, they're animals. They're not trying to be mean. As people, we speak a different language and we don't realize that the dog is asking, pleading, begging us to back off and children really, they don't, I mean, they don't know. So we need to teach kids and it's okay. So much has been learned about dogs, you know, in recent years and we're able to have better relationships with people and dogs. And that's a beautiful thing. And I'm very excited about that. And I'm really hoping that when I have grandkids, that the myths that I've mentioned before, they'll be gone. I never ever let my kids pet a dog that's running around on the street. I don't know that dog. If I can, I will help that dog. I'm notorious for finding dogs and um, finding their owners, but I don't let my kids go and do that because again, it's just safety. Never let your child run towards a dog, okay? That can be seen as really intense play or it could be seen as very aggressive or whatever. And the dog can misread the child's intentions. So we just, 
let's not do that. Let's just be safe. Teach your children not to do that. I understand that, you know, I have kids one through 10. So I understand that different ages need different types of management. Work with your child. You know your child best. Work, help your child understand the situation and understand the level of understanding that your child has, okay? If a dog is running up to your child or a dog is running around and your child wants to retreat, do not hear me. Dogs are predatory animals. Do not let your child run away from the dog. Do not move back. Dogs move towards movement. If you're doing recall training with your dog, a lot of dog trainers will tell you to get your dog to come back to you. You run away from your dog so that the dog will follow you. So if the dog is going to follow the movement, don't let your child run away, okay? Block the child. It's honestly what I would do if a dog was coming up to my child, I'd block stand my ground and be ready to push the dog, nudge the dog, whatever I need to do. Look for an escape route. If I can shut, if the dog is coming up to, I've had a dog, um, little anecdote, it was a pit bull. It was a friendly pit bull, but I didn't know that. He, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna spark a debate right here. I was out with my mom's little dog. I was at my mom's house. This pit bull just came charging up to my mom's front door. This is what I did. So I picked up Tweeny. I stood my ground. I stood there and I, and the dog backed off. The dog didn't look aggressive. It looked like it was running and playing. I have another video. If you have kids and dogs and you want help managing the two, or you're thinking about getting a dog and you have kids, or maybe you're going to have a kid and you already have dogs and you just want to know how to manage. I have a video right there telling you how I do it resources I use. Stick with me. We got this. Peace out.